Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Crit House. This is a photography review. My name is Jeff Larson, and uh, I am our host. And we have uh, here at the Crit House a process where we're going to take a look at a batch of photo photographs from a photographer. It's either a project or a group of images and have a discussion about them and try to learn from it and uh, try to help out the photographer. We have two experts to help us out here today. Uh, Edward Boches is a Boston-based photographer who does documentary and street work, and he's a, uh, a curator as well. And Ellen Friedlander is out in uh, Los Angeles, and she does street photography as well as uh, portraits and landscape, and uh, uh, she curates some shows as well. So welcome to the both of you. Hi there. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Uh, it's great to uh, have you join us. And our photographer today is a Boston based amateur photographer. His name is Chris Washington. Uh, he began uh, pursuing the arts just in the last couple of years. Um, and uh, when he's not taking pictures, he runs a marketing firm, which he founded about 20 years ago. So um, Chris, I'm going to let you talk about yourself and your photography. And we're going to take a look at your work. So Chris, tell me about what we're going to see and what you've been uh, taking pictures of and Welcome. Uh, thank you. And, and thank you very, very much for having me on. I, I really appreciate uh, this opportunity uh, to get your feedback. So thanks to, to all of you. Um, and I, I look forward to, uh, to hearing what you have to say. Um, the, um, for me, um, photography uh, is, is a rather personal pursuit. Um, I started it as a mindfulness practice um, about two years ago. Um, I found a few other activities that uh, allow me to channel my attention so completely um, as intently looking through the viewfinder um, and looking at the world outside my own head. Um, so in, in many ways, uh, the images that uh, I was making initially uh, were almost incidental uh, to the process. Uh, as I started to do more and to share my images, um, I became more serious about it um, and enjoyed it. And uh, I wanted to start to make photographs um, that express something that, that I find beautiful or meaningful. And that's, that's sort of the journey that I'm on is trying to understand uh, what makes that hang together, what, what triggers me um, in a sense. Uh, I started with uh, landscape photography. And I now mainly do street. Um, I tend to focus on people as figures within a beautiful milieu, um, abstract reflections, uh, and increasingly street portraits whenever possible. Um, I'm attracted to the idea of people subordinated uh, by the scale of an environment that they're in, um, or just capturing people within gorgeously lighted spaces. Um, I make black and white images, uh, and less color adds meaning, uh, or it's complementary. Um, and I, I do find myself having a difficult time making color images that I'm happy with a lot of the time. Um, I'm attracted to uh, uh, black and white, mainly. Um, Sorry, I already, already said that. And um, really images that, that connote a sense of, of drama or what I perceive to be dramatic uh, through scale, uh, through contrast or some emotive connection um, with a subject. Um, and uh, what I'm currently working on um, as I try to progress um, is slowing down uh, and taking more time to find a scene and work a scene. Um, for me, I find that more productive uh, than trying to hunt for candid moments, um, though I'd like to do that someday. Um, I'm also trying to ask more people for street portraits, um, as I find that uh, very rewarding. Um, eventually, I'd like to develop uh, a body of work that hangs together enough and is cohesive enough to make a book just for my own uh, purposes. Um, and I'd like to start working in projects, uh, which is something that uh, I have yet to do. So hopefully that gives you a little little background on on uh, who I am and what I'm doing. Chris, that's, uh, that's great assessment that's, that's of your work. Super Zen and the art of photography, I think we'll call it. <laughs> um, well, so Ellen, um, mm -hmm. tell us what your initial thoughts are and seeing as we scramble through. And I think you said you wanted to start on this image that's to talk fun. about. Well, I, I actually think, Chris, that you have two bodies of work right here you have some strong, really strong portrait work already. And then this photograph is, is a really beautiful um, cityscape. Um, it's just 
the tonal quality on the left hand side is really strong. It's it, 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 initially I you know I was just gravitated towards it, and then you have that little person in there. All those angles, the squares, the rectangles, the lines. It's just a very nice, succinct, beautiful composition. Um, I think that when we're talking about street to get it to the next level, you take this and you make it like like what would make somebody stop, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's that's the difference when you get to another point is you wanna make, this is really beautiful, but now how do you elevate it to make the viewer go, There's there needs to be some sort of um, surprise or um, just an uncertainty or maybe a just something that gets the viewer like, oh, I, I didn't see that red flag in the corner just to, surprise us because we're inundated with photographs. So that's the one thing I would say that helps the photograph be um, uniquely yours. Mm. Um, in your, I'm just, if you can go to his portrait work, the one of, there's this, I mean, this is beautiful. And then the other one with the hair in front of her, I think it was a woman in front of her face. Is that the, uh, um, the color, color image? Oh, uh, this one. This one. Yes. I mean, Man. look at those eyes. They're amazing. I'm incredibly, I mean, just I'm riveted. Yeah. And the hair not in the perfect location. And then the buildings are black and dark. There's a lot of energy in this photograph. And your vantage point is a little low, also really interesting. So those, those are two takeaways from two, two bodies of work that you already have right here. Edward. So on, uh, Stay on both those images for a second. The first one, so there's things that I love about it, which is you're using um, not only the entire frame, that back to the other image, Jeff, please. You're using not only the entire frame, but you're using the foreground, I mean, you know, side and top to bottom, you're using the foreground as well uh, as the background. And so there's a lot of layers going on, which adds visual texture, which I think is interesting. I agree with, with Alan, with how do you get that, the kind of tension that would lead to emotion. And one thing that I, I think about as I see this, what I would call this genre of, of photographs in, in your work is they're, they're all very similar where you, you do have a nice frame, you are using light very well and you have a little figure isolated in, in these large buildings. I think if, if, you, if you were to find a way where you had something in the foreground to, to the create some tension and juxtaposition within the background, or you had a close up of a face with a figure in in the in the background, you'd start to create a little bit more, um, you know, dynamic that that might get to be emotional as opposed to just perfectly formed uh, and structured. And that portrait was the image that I wanted to talk about because I thought that was gorgeous on every level um, because uh, not, not only the eyes and, and the frame between the buildings, but the shadows in his, in her scarf or jacket or whatever, mirroring the shadows in the, in the buildings. And the other thing, back to that perspective, it's, it's like a hip shot, but it's obviously not a hip shot because it's too, it's too perfect a, a portrait. So, um, so that, I mean, that I'm, um, this is I'm a really beautiful excited. photograph. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, st I, I, and, and I can, I also like the mask because the eyes are telling me that this person is sort of smiling or, or is, is lit up and is in, in enjoying this engagement, even though I can't see, um, you know, a mouth. So want to go back to the, to the context? Oh, yep. So, so the one thing I will say on, on some of the, uh, the other things. So this is this is me. Again, I love how you're using the frame and you're thinking about light. So I think the top right one works pretty well. One critic one criticism I have is when you photograph everything from behind people all the time. Mm. And me, that's like too easy. It it basically says you weren't getting into the photograph. You weren't taking me, the viewer, into the photograph. You were just watching something in front of the camera, making a great picture, well framed, well lit, etc. But you're not taking me to something that I wouldn't or couldn't see on my own. Mm. And I think that's what Ellen's getting at when she talks about where's the emotion. Right. Mm. Mm. 
those three black and white portraits that we're looking at the contact sheet, they you they hang really well together. Mm. If you you can see, and they all have very distinctly different emotions that they're emit, omitting, right? And that you could see a body of work just starting right there, really strong. You've also framed them very interestingly with negative space and positive space and how their bodies are shaped in within the frame. All that is really interesting. Interestingly also, the, the, the image on the lower left, while it doesn't quite have the drama uh, or the light of some of the other images, it starts to get a little bit closer to a storytelling because you have two people in the foreground that have one kind of relationship. You have a, a, a mom with two kids. You have the depth into the, into the background. It also, it looks like an, from another time period completely. It does. Um, it's not perfectly technically achieved, but, but again, this same image, I think, pushed in a little bit more. So there was a little bit more tension with the foreground and background. Uh, I mean, I like it as I like it as it is. Even even with the flag on the upper left, and um, it, it it does have an emotion. Two flags actually it has an emotion to it, just in and of itself. Um, this is a really important photograph because it does look like it's from another time. It's very interesting how you captured that. Wouldn't you agree, Edward? I mean, it's kind oh, of- Oh, yeah, totally. I think it's, it's, a, I think it's a combination of the light. I think it's all the old buildings. I think it's the fog, you know, leading off into the background. And the other thing, I don't know if you thought about this when you took the picture, there's no new cars, right? Because every time we see great old New York photographs, it's the cars that to, to telegraph the time. And it's really hard to avoid that these days. And I think that might be what, what this is. There's, mm. there's no, you don't see it. You see, don't see modern cars up close. And this is a really interesting thing, project to think about that would be really unique is to make photographs that look like another time period, mm. but they're made today. Mm. And so, and this would be the start of that. Really interesting. That is interesting. Mm. I think so, you're starting with a toolkit, Chris, that is very strong. Um, it's your ability to see, I mean, even just listening to your early description of what you're trying to do with your photographs is, is a kind of a clarity that I'm not sure most people, most people would be able to talk that eloquently about their, about their work until they're deep into a project that they've written the artist statement for. So, um, so and I and and we the previous photographer Ellen had said that it was really important um, for him to find his style and who he was and um, you know there's a saying that we all we can only take the picture we can take because we take the picture who we are uh, but being able to articulate it so clearly I think will be helpful for you. So Jeff, go back to the photograph we just had full screen, the one that looked, yes. So what's really special here is that mother and the two children, there's a, there's a, a, a sweetness that you can see in that, and they're right in the center. And if they were any other shape, if they weren't touching, if they were, if they were stiffer, the photograph would not have the same feeling to it. So that's something just to remember when you're making photographs on the street and you're thinking about it, every person that you actually photograph, their bodily um, gestures are incredibly important for the overall feeling of the photograph. And so you can see that clearly you, you did it here. So yeah, there's little looks, things, the more, you, as I said, the more you look at an image, the more things you see. So, you know, you notice his the, the man in the front his foot up and the woman in the back her foot up and then you also notice oh she's wearing a mask so this probably isn't way back in time and they become these little things uh to discover which um and then you go to the litter and it makes you wonder well where where are we and 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 um what's what just happened before these people were here one of the things that I like about this image is that it's in soft focus and it's completely opposite yeah. to the way I shoot because everything is 
tack sharp or I try to make everything tack sharp and I, I really enjoy this. Chris, let's bring you back into the conversation. What's your, uh, any reactions to what you've just heard? It's just tremendously helpful um, to, to hear this. It, it really is. I mean, it, um, I, I really learn a tremendous amount, um, you know, anytime I, I uh, talking, you know, with, with you, Jeff, when we're in conversation as, as a group, you know, monthly, um, really anytime. Uh, but, you know, th this is, it's very helpful for me to get this kind of um, feedback from people with the experience to, to really help I think understand, you know, maybe what I'm trying to do, where I'm trying to go, um, and and how to get there, and and providing specific, um, you know, insight about that. I think that um, I I would love to do more of the type of, of portraiture, um, you know, that's actually a, it's a gentleman, and and uh, he he must have been six eight or so, you know, that's why the angle <laughs> is is kind of looking up, you know, not, not this one, but the. The gentleman with the uh, with the the dreadlocked hair, um, but you know those I, I find very poignant, and I'd like to to do more of those mm. um, that that type of work, um, and also you know just just hearing the feedback on things like an image that that is in soft focus, um, you know it's a little bit different for me, and and just just hearing this, I mean it, it's I'm taking it all in, and, and it's all uh, you know very instructive, and I I, I really appreciate it. It's I have, great. I have a question for you, Chris. When you photograph on the street, do you take more than one photograph at that like the the photograph that we were all talking about that looks like another time? Did you make many more frames of that, or was there just one frame? That one. This was uh, right after um, or at the end of the the recent Chinese New Year celebration in Chinatown in Boston. Mm. And uh, I went to a street where uh, the, there were there were no activities. So there were activities on all the other streets. Um, but I, I walked over to the empty street. And this is the scene that was on that that empty street. Um, and so I, I just, you know, I looked down the street and saw it. Um, and I just took, I think, you know, one or two uh, images, you know, of this. The reason I um, ask is because on the right hand side is that person in, in on walking on the sidewalk on the right hand side. Mm -hmm. And it would be really, that photograph would be even stronger had you like made a couple more photographs and that photograph, that person was a little bit more clear, like a little bit further along. And then all of a sudden, you know, it would just be that much more dynamic. Mm. Yeah, that, that's so, one of the things I think building, you know, that that confidence and it's it's the instinct. I think I, I don't yet have the instinct to, to do exactly that. And I think well, I need the experience to think that way. Yeah. That that comes with like because some of this with 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 an image with this much happening in the frame, it's never possible for you to see everything that is is happening, and you're always going to be surprised when you when you see the image. And I don't care how many years you're a photographer, hmm. um, but but I think it. But the more you do it, the the more your intuition um, and you just feel for it. Uh, gets you at the right place at the right time, and then and then you realize, okay, I automatically know what's in the foreground, and I very well know what's in the center of the photograph. Now let me take a half a second and just look at the edges and think about what's moving there. I want to say something else about this that I find really interesting that that is also different from some of your other photographs besides the soft focus is there there's an ambiguity to this image. It's like this, this some of these your other images are crisp, clear, but also literal. I know exactly what the story is. The story is what you have put in the photograph. Here, there's a story. I don't know what it is. I can use my imagination. I don't mind not knowing what it is. And that ambiguity makes this more interesting to look at. And it, and it, and it sucks me in even, even deeper. And I think you had one other image where you, you, it felt a little bit like that, but, but that's just something else to think about. Um, you know, you don't have to be perfectly literal. Like I think it was this one here because the, you've got the guard on the right who's still and stoic and clear with a shadow and you've got those other things. We obviously know it's a reflection, but is something interesting in the juxtaposition between all those people going one way and in motion and he's still and he's not and are they going home and is he still stuck at work? What does that mean? Um, is he's, he's, he's a black gentleman, uh, are the other people, you know, white people getting to go home. It's just, it, it doesn't even matter what the answer is. It's just that 
there's enough ambiguity in the image that the viewer thinks about that. Let me wrap it up with a quick question for you both about his uh, color images, which are in here. We haven't really talked about um, when I initially saw this one and this one, especially this one, I thought that it would work really well as a black and white, especially with the other portraits that were there. Do you have any thoughts about um, the two color images that he's shown? My first question is, is when do you decide if they're going to be color or black and white? Do you decide after the fact or do you decide when you're taking the image? I can lie and say that I do it when I'm taking the image. Uh, <laughs> I, think, I think that in reality, you know, it, it, in most uh, cases, I, I do try to think, uh, you know, beforehand. It, in both of these cases, um, you know, I, I knew that I wanted to make the image mainly in color. Um, with this gentleman, he just had a beautiful skin tone and was standing in beautiful light. He just looked phenomenal. His, the, the, the color, it, I think, is beautiful and the color of the light uh, you know, reflecting on him is beautiful. This person uh, also has a, just a, a beautiful face and the tattoo and the, the color of her hair is meaningful to her, uh, you know, and so I thought it was meaningful, you know, to, to include that in the, in the image. I think it would be, uh, you know, it wouldn't do, do justice to, to her image, you know, to, to make that uh, black and white. And so I, I chose to make those color. Well, she's definitely, she needs the color. I mean, right. her hair, her tattoo, her blue mask. I mean, she's, 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 she, she wants you to make her in color. Mm -hmm. So that it definitely, you, you, you hear her. Yeah, the light here wasn't as good, but I would have thought about a profile in her. And I'm going to make one of the suggestions on this stuff. I think, I think you, you shouldn't shoot everything from that angle. Mm. I think you should mix it up a little bit, certainly on portraits um, at number one. Number two, once somebody has agreed to let you take their photograph, work the hell out of it mm. and just and do it until they tell you, yeah, I'm tired of this guy. I got to <laughs> I got to go out. So I mean, once they've agreed, you you have them. You, you know, they're going to always start out with a smile, let them do that. And then you ask them not to smile. You ask them to keep their lips pressed together. You ask them to close their eyes for a second, give them something to think about, tell them to open their eyes, not their lips, shoot them from a different focal distance, shoot them from the side. I mean, once they have agreed, let them get fucking sick of you before you quit. You know, yeah. and I'm going to add, I'm going to add to Edward. Don't be afraid to be like, play with the frame hmm. you know like you have edges you know and also changing your shutter speed at the end you've gotten all you've gotten all your photographs everything is right there in focus okay well now change your change it up a little bit slow the shutter speed down maybe get them out of the frame maybe get a hand just you know just again work it till it's you can't you know can't work it anymore that's when you get your best photographs what a you great know, uh, uh, the, uh, Sorry, Edward, last thought. I was just going to say, uh, it, 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 we said this to Nixon as well, looking at work is, is really essential. What I would recommend based on some of this stuff is look at Matt Black's mm -hmm. American Geography. Um, I think it's his newest book. Oh my gosh, mind blowing. Mind -blowing. Um, but he shoots in this very, very uh, high contrast, black and white. But when Ellen was talking about that portrait thing, uh, there was a portrait in there that was one of the greatest portraits I've ever seen. It was just a hand on the top of, a, of like a fence pole. Mm -hmm. And it was just the pole in the hand. And this, this was a black man. He had to be 95, 105 years old. His hand, the wrinkles of his hand. And what you realize is there's these, there's these details about people besides just their face. And that's, that's really worth, uh, worth looking at. Will do. Perfect. Thanks. See, these conversations are, are so amazing. And I thank you all for, uh, for uh, helping with this. And Chris, thanks for um, having the courage to show your work. It's always a challenge to put yourself out there. And uh, thank oh. you for doing that. So thank um, you for, for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys very much. Absolutely. Hey, Chris, I want to say that I've learned stuff from looking at your work tonight. And, and you have some portraits there that are that I'm envious of. So beautiful. Uh, Agreed. Yeah, yeah. Agreed. Today's reviewers are Ellen Friedlander, who comes with us from Los Angeles. You can find her work at ellenfriedlanderphotography.com, and she's on Instagram at emfphoto59. 
Uh, Edward Bochus is uh, here with us as well. He is Boston based and you can find his uh, website at edwardbochus.com. And that's also how you find him on Instagram. And Chris Washington is with us. He has two Instagram feeds, Chris Wago and uh, Chris Wago dot bw for his black and white work if you are interested in participating in the crit house you can uh, contact me at the crit house.com and uh, we can consider having you on and have your work uh, reviewed and critiqued as well thank you so much for joining us here on the crit house <laughs>